During the COVID lockdown, many people in the Clonakilty and Timalig areas have discovered one of the hidden secrets of the locality. It is a four kilometre stretch of high, pretty level walking road, which is located along a ridge on your left as you are travelling the main road from Clonakilty to Timalig. The section of road, which runs at an average height of 125 metres above sea level, was part of an ancient road from Ross Carberry, which went through Clonakilty and on to Kinsale. The road has everything for walkers, amazing views, incredible history, and now and then you get the feeling that you could almost touch the sky. It should be called the Clonakilty Timalik Sky Road. Most walkers park their cars at a spot halfway along called the Gub, and some walk the western section first, and others do the eastern section. As you head west, you see the distinctive Mount Dean Hill, which once formed part of the eastern boundary of the ancient West Cork Kingdom of Cork On top of the hill is a tumulus or burial mound, which dates back to the early Bronze Age. It was sketched by John Windell in 1842. Another name for the hill was Malach Sea Fien, or the Seat of Finn, sometimes called the Giant's Seat. In folklore it is reputed that a giant used to sit on top of the hill and wash his feet in the blind river that flows well over 100 metres underneath. Heading west, you pass over a hump on the road, which is the highest point in Clonakilty Parish. The fields on the right were once part of a now forgotten townland called Kilcorsey, or Corsey's Wood. From here you can see in the distance Mushra Moor near Mill Street, which is 500 metres high, Mullachalish, 650 metres in height, and the Paps of Vanu near Killarney, almost 700 metres high. As you look into the valley, there is the famous Castleview Mills, where an eviction took place in 1886. And Ballinrohr Tower House or Castle, the seat of the McCarthy Cremines. As you walk further along, you pass the entrance to the Michael Collins Centre at Castleview. And then the Dunmanway Hills and the Sheehy Mountains in Kerry come into view. Soon, Carrickfather Hill, where the Aragadine River rises, and Cunnock Fien Hill, close to where Michael Collins was born, are straight in front of you. The end of the western section of the walk is marked by a crossroads called Barn and Nacleggan, or the Gap of the Skulls, at the top of Castleview. In 1601, after the defeat at Kinsale, the famous West Cork chieftain Donald Cam O'Sullivan Bear was heading back west with his army to his territory near Castletown Bear. When he got to this crossroads, he noticed that his fine new Spanish saddle was getting stained. He had a bag attached to it which contained the heads of English soldiers killed in battle. It was their blood that was staining the saddle. The chieftain threw the sack into the field at the crossroads and the skulls remained there for decades afterwards. Hence the name Barn and Atleggan, the Gap of the Skulls. This crossroads was also the site of a killing where unbaptized stillborn babies were buried up to the early 1900s. Under the rules of the Catholic Church, until well into the 20th century, the remains of stillborn babies were not allowed to be buried in consecrated ground, so they were buried at crossroads and other places around the countryside, usually in the middle of the night. As we turn at Barn and at Leggin, heading east again, after a while we get to see the hills of Artfield and Clonakilty Bay with Inchidani Island. The townland here on the right of the road is Ballon Rohr, the ford mouth of the shot or the missile. Further on, the farm opposite the Michael Collins Centre is still owned by the Murphy family. One of that family, Lieutenant Con Murphy, who was an IRA officer, was shot by British forces at Clounderine near Kilbritton during the War of Independence in May 1921. Soon you pass an old Boreen one of only few left in this area. A lot of boreens were removed in the last century during land reclamation. 
As we get back to the car park at the Gob, we take a left. The townland here on the left is Kielavarig, which translates as Barry's Wood. The townland on the right is Karoo, which means a quarter of land. Every so often you see signs of what an important thoroughfare this once was, with at least 20 places where recesses in the ditches indicate sites where houses or cabins once stood. Local lore tells us that there was once a she-bean or an inn along this road to cater for passing traffic. If you look into the fields at the side of the road, you can see the remains of ring forts and lisses, which were defended farmsteads and cattle enclosures. They are at least 1,000 years old. This ring fort is in the townland of Coolig Boy, which means yellow or faded house ruins. This road would have been the route that led to these ancient farmsteads and their existence indicates how old this road is. This is the old head of Kinsale. The Lusitania was torpedoed 12 miles off the old head in 1915. You can also see the picturesque seaside village of Cork McSherry. At the eastern end of the walk is a crossroads called Crusha Valley or the crossroads of the gathering, and Kielavarig wood once stood on the hillside behind it. In 1641, during the rebellion, local Irish rebels at that time, the Hardnets of Court McSherry, were camped on this hillside. It was there that they hanged an Englishman called John Burroughs, his wife and two sons, who they suspected as being English spies. Before land reclamation, a field on that hillside was up to living memory known as Burroughs Field. We turn once more at Crusha Valley and head west. Looking on your right we can see Tlagoch Churchyard, which dates back at least to the 1500s. Four IRA men who died during the War of Independence and Civil War are buried there. Lieutenant Paddy Crowley, Lieutenant Con Murphy who we have already mentioned, Volunteer Dan O'Donovan and Commandant Charlie Hurley, OC of the Third Cork Brigade. Hurley was shot dead in a gunfight with British forces at Ballymurphy on the 19th of June 1921 and was famously buried by the Flying Column with full military honours at Lagoch a few days later in the middle of the night. Behind the churchyard is DC's farmhouse where Lord Bandon was held hostage during the War of Independence. It is said that he spent some of his time in captivity being held in a tomb in the nearby Tlagoch graveyard. As we head back to the gob and the car, we can see Kielmaloo the house in the trees. It dates from the late 1700s and replaced an older structure. This was the seat of the Beamish family. They once owned over 15,000 acres in the south of Ireland and a branch of the family set up the brewery in Cork City. Finally, there is just so much to be seen on the Clonakilty Timber League Sky Road. From this position alone, you can see a ring fort in the foreground. Behind it, to the left, is Ballinroher Castle, and behind that, in the trees, is Lissalan House, the former mansion of the infamous landlord William Bench Jones. Take a bit of time to explore this amazing walk. It's like going on holidays, and for the locals, it's on our doorstep.